decentralized, there's no central association organization, and you can set up and start your own community. But what's still very important is for sure the social connection and to be uh, connected with each other, and um, if you have to run like, uh, or to solve legal problems or stuff like that. And um, what we did is, uh, or what Andy did is, we developed an API where um, people can um, host their own um, API file with some meta information about the community. It starts from how many nodes do you have, what is your email address, what are other communication channels you use, what is a website, and uh, um, for sure some geo data, but it's not a node database. It's just meta information from uh, several communities. And our idea would be to spread that um, all over the world to, to, have, um, to connect all the communities and to have meta informations and uh, communication channels and contact channels with every community all over the world and some metadata. And which data these are in uh, detail, Andy will tell you. Okay, uh, so um, let's start. Um, what features uh, do we have uh, with our Freifunk API? Um, it's inspired by the Space API. Um, it was uh, developed a lot of years ago to connect um, all the hackerspaces uh, all over, over the world and there were some features like um, where can we find the hackerspace, is it open now, uh, when is it opened uh, and so on and how you can contact them. So we took a lot of uh, information from their uh, JSON schema they developed for the spaces API and uh, added uh, some other things uh, that are uh, wireless community specific, um, like uh, what routing protocol is used, or uh, how is your firmware called you use under routers, what networks do you use, and so on. Um, it's based on a JSON uh, schema uh, we uh, develop. Uh, we are now have version 0.4.8, I think, I'm not sure. Um, the speed of development got slower last, uh, over the last month um, because uh, we have a lot of features in there, a um, lot of information. Um, hmm? A nice effect. Maybe you just Ah. Okay. Um, first of all, I don't know if any one of you already heard a talk about the Freifunk API or uh, is in touch with the Freifunk API. I think there are a lot of uh, Fry, uh, some Freifunk guys uh, who know about it, yes. Uh, and uh, as Monique mentioned, we had a talk last year at the Battle Mesh in Leipzig about the Freifunk API and we talk to some people um, what we should improve or what fields we should add uh, to the um, JSON schema. And I'll go through some features we use um, and tell you the, the latest features we have there. Uh, for example, our generator is uh, it's a web page to generate a first version of your API file. Um, the last months we had only slight improvements in usage and uh, one thing is the map to select a location. Um, let me click that link. Um, for example, here you can see a map where um, if you uh, uh, click into the map, uh, you can see the coordinates uh, are filled in uh, to the uh, form and even if you select an existing community, um, it will be centered uh, to the community you selected here. Um, this is a feature we uh, had the chance to uh, get a developer from Google Summer of Code uh, this year. Um, he, uh, this is one of the features he did for us. Um, the this generator uh, we use, uh, most communities only use one time uh, to generate the initial file and uh, then we hope they uh, have uh, dynamic scripts, for example, to update nodes, uh, to add uh, uh, network information they have about their nodes and um, other informations like RSS feeds or um, 
calendar feeds um, are static links in there and um, we collect uh, these links to uh, use this information. For example, another project of the Google Summer of Code student we had uh, this year is our calendar aggregator. Um, there are fields for, for calendars, uh, so every community can put in a feed to their uh, event calendar. And um, we take all these um, information from their ICS feeds, uh, put them together and um, merge it up. And at the end you can uh, query um, via this calendar API, uh, API the student developed. Um, all these calendars, you can mix uh, different communities, you can get the events of all communities, you can uh, get uh, just a certain number of, uh, of events of certain communities. Uh, it looks like this. Uh, this is the um, result you get from the calendar API. And uh, there are two form. Uh, two formats we can uh, receive. It's uh, ICS to import it into another calendar or it's a JSON uh, thing uh, where you can have all uh, events in a, a JSON file format. And as you can see we in this example I mix uh, Weimarnetz and Hamburg uh, two communities that provide calendar feeds. Uh, if I don't provide a source um, you can get nothing because uh, you have of course you have to write source is all and now we, we could get the events of all our um, communities. There are two uh, other um, parameters it's from and to so you can uh, have a range uh, of dates where you can uh, find events from. Um, this is our aggregator. Um, there are uh, some things that uh, use it. Uh, for example, we have a, a timeline a jQuery plugin that uses the calendar API. And for example, uh, we can see these informations. Uh, this is a page with uh, four uh, examples of uh, access. Um, in the upper left, um, it's just uh, uh, there, there are some uh, events that are put in the uh, source code. Um, in the upper, uh, in the lower left, uh, you can see the events from a specific community. It's uh, Halle. Um, on the upper right, it's the. Um, it's a specific uh, date range, I think, we have there for uh, several communities and in, on the uh, lower right you can see the upcoming events of all communities we have in this feed. And if you click on uh, one of the events uh, you will get uh, further information like where will it take place and times and uh, sometimes there are s some further information in there. Maybe here, yes, we have, uh, for example, in Weimar, we have uh, short text uh, about what we do on our events and so on. Um, another thing is the RSS feed aggregator. We um, collect links to RSS feeds uh, of our communities and every community uh, that puts in this f feed into its API file uh, will uh, appear in this RSS feed. Um, for now um, its uh, source is Weimarnetz, it's a specific community. We can query this feed uh, for all communities. takes a bit longer and for example we can um, we can say we only want uh, three items, the next uh, three or the, or the three latest um, feed entries uh, we have there in our uh, aggregated link uh, the uh, feed the feed will appear in um, order of the appearance in the hmm? it's five yet ah okay Monique uh, says 
I should show the fry from net. On the left side, uh, we integrated uh, the RSS feed aggregator for all our communities. Um, you can see uh, there are different communities uh, that uh, have their feed in their API file. And so we have a very nice mixture of news um, on our website and it's really dynamic. Um, and you can also uh, um, subscribe to it and receive the whole feed of all the communities, of some communities, for example. Okay, uh, next thing is our community map. Um, it was one of the first features uh, we used because uh, we introduced the Freifunk API when, when we relaunched uh, freifunk.net, uh, our website, and Monique said, um, I have a map in my design, in my wireframe, and I want uh, this blue bubbles. Uh, there should be all the community information. Uh, so I did it. <laughs> and we added uh, the latest feeds and upcoming events for every community um, to the map. Right now it's uh, not uh, deployed uh, to our website right now, but there's a demonstration I have. And we can see, for example, for the Hamburg community, um, you'll get all the information. They have 870 nodes right now. <laughs> Um, there are contact information, how to contact, uh, contact the community. Uh, here you have the, all the events, uh, or the next two e upcoming events uh, we will show for this community. And uh, in the lower part you can see uh, data from our aggregated RSS feed. And uh, here, of course, uh, you see the uh, news from only this community. And it, it's not uh, just a picture, uh, we can see in Weimar. Um, next week we will be at the case communication camp. Um, and uh, so we have uh, news and uh, events now on the map and I think it will be deployed in a few weeks. <laughs> Okay, there is, uh, Monique mentioned uh, our Freifunk API, it's not a node API, it's uh, just a community API, uh, but uh, there were some guys uh, who wanted to have a, a map of nodes uh, all over Germany from all, com from all Freifunk communities we have in Germany. And uh, they developed a project named Freifunk Karte, uh, translated it's just Freifunk map. Um, they take data from uh, the Freifunk API, our communities can provide a link to a notes.json. Um, it's a kind of standardized format uh, of uh, the Gluon firmware. I don't know if you know the Gluon firmware. And, but they manage to import other formats too. So um, they aggregate all these information and uh, we can see all our routers we have in Germany and um, in Austria. <laughs> And I see there is a note, oh, there are some notes in, in France. And Freifunk Berlin has a note in Switzerland. <laughs> so, but uh, it's a really nice view uh, to show um, all the notes all over Germany and would be great if you can have uh, something similar for um, international wireless communities. So where do we go? Um, we exported our Freifunk API already to Asia. It's a f called the First Asia API. Um, that's not a wireless community network. Uh, it's uh, just uh, about open source communities in general. And uh, I have this example. They use, for example, they use uh, this map uh, we have seen for now, and you can see all the information uh, we got there. Um, and uh, that's where the Google Summer of Code support comes from because unfortunately Freifunk uh, isn't a part of Google Summer of Code uh, this year and uh, FOSS Asia provided uh, one project to us to improve the, all these API stuff 
and we just used uh, the Fosacia API stuff uh, like map and calendar aggregator and feed aggregator to um, use it in Freifunk tools. Um, what comes next is to simplify all installations and the usage of the, of the tools you saw and for now it's just every tool is separate and you have to install it on your own and configuration is not that simple and we are working on it to make it uh, simple and uh, stupid so we can um, uh, everyone can install for example a map or a feed aggregator on its own or we can easily collect information Oh, yeah. um, so I, I just mentioned to show there are lots of other informations in the um, API, like what kind. Maybe of we can take a look in the generator. The Please make it a bit larger. Maybe you should come in front. <laughs> Okay, um, this is our generator form. Uh, you can see uh, some general information. Um, one important thing we, we added, added uh, since last year is uh, the country field. I think it's uh, very useful for an international version of the uh, API. Um, another thing is uh, the um, is the information what you focus uh, on uh, if you only provide backbone networks or if you provide public internet access um, if you do social networking uh, so uh, maybe it's important to have the thing with this was um, that we learned last year that um, the focus in um, all the um, communities are very different. So some provide public Wi-Fi, some not. Some more focusing on backbone and are more acting like a community ISP. Um, some have a really strong social focus and so on. And this is meant a bit as a little research also regarding this. Do you offer this or that? But it would also be interesting what other kinds can be uh, can be like um, added here. It's not final. Um, at all, but it's meant like a small research or to get at least the idea if I don't know this specific community network, let's say in, in the Americas, then I'm very interested what they offer and or how they run or what are the basic ideas of it. Yeah. Um, other fields are, for example, services. Um, you can provide uh, services, um, for example, in Weimar we use it uh, with the OSR services plugin to uh, fill up uh, this API file, what services are online for now and so on. Um, and so every community could add uh, its uh, own services and we can uh, provide a list of services at the end and everyone can see and use it. Uh, I think it's more important to use the services instead of only seeing them. Um, here, for example, it's in node maps. It's uh, just um, you can select what kind of node map it is. And for the Freifunk map uh, I showed you before, um, uses uh, this f these fields uh, to select uh, how to import uh, node data, for example. And uh, there's a huge section of technical details uh, for firmware, domain names, if you have uh, some uh, own uh, top-level domains, a lot of uh, Freifunk communities use their own uh, top-level domains that are not uh, officially registered anywhere. Um, you can provide information about the network ranges you use, uh, if you have specific IPv6 ranges or IPv4 networks, uh, you can add them here. Here we have uh, the routing protocols, uh, what, you, uh, what you use there. It's a list, you can select uh, several protocols. Um, uh, it's, uh, for us in Germany, we had a lot of discussions about this field because uh, some communities use two uh, routing protocols. Uh, they combine Batman and OLSR, for example. Um, and it's a list uh, that's growing, I think. There should be an other. <laughs> and a free text. Like a for other and then like a text field. Ah. OES. 
the ones you had in mind. Yeah. <laughs> You can provide a pull request to the API. Yeah, that's <laughs> okay, then there are some legal issues. Um, I think that's uh, this uh, is really a German uh, a German uh, style thing uh, because we we have this construct of the uh, second liability, uh, so-called Störerhaftung in Germany, and there are a lot of uh, fixes or workarounds we use uh, to. Uh, protect uh, people uh, providing internet from uh, being uh, um, uh, uh, from uh, being um, reliable. Reliable, yes. Okay, so I think we have uh, an overview about uh, what data we we are able to store. Of course, uh, we can extend it at the end. Um, let. Let me go back to the slides. Okay, this is uh, the thing um, we had for now. And uh, I think now we can go to the discussion, discussion. Now it's correct. Um, first question, of course, is do we want an international wireless community API? Or is it just uh, that Monique and I, we, we like to have it? <laughs> um, and I think we can uh, go uh, through these questions and uh, we hope uh, for some input of you, from you. Okay, uh, do we have... Uh, instances of the APIs from different community networks that have them exchange data, but having yeah, separate instances instead of only one central. Um, no, I, I don't think we want uh, to integrate um, all the international communities to the Freifunk API. It can be a separate uh, thing. Um, Maybe it can be uh, integrated. I don't know if uh, if it is possible, but I think it's uh, more practical to have uh, another thing. Uh, for example, uh, Freifunk would be one uh, one community there, uh, so we don't list every uh, town or every community that uh, is in our list uh, to the international list. Maybe it depends on the country. Uh, it's uh, very different from country to country how they are organized and so on. Also, it is like um, you host your own community f um, API for on your own service, and we just and then you do a uh, pull leg, and then we just pull it in. So it's not centralized in that sense. And the only thing that's centralized is the Freifunknet uh, website, where we just aggregate all the stuff to display it and there but there are for sure it's open and there are also other people who started like with the Freifunk Karte to build up on this data that are in the API or another one did a heat map of it and so you can then build your own applications uh, on the data so that's the whole idea. Um, and there's only one uh, really thing that is uh, centralized. It's the directory where all the links to the community files are written in. And uh, all the other things you can uh, set up the tools uh, on your own. You can use this directory on your own and the data is, is free to use. Um. Um, do you generally assume that uh, communities belong to countries? Because you can see that many of the newer generation uh, mesh networks, they're more like international initiatives and they cannot be attached to any location. So that will break like a strict hierarchical tree-like approach. And the same applies to nodes. Like single nodes can actually at that point be part of many networks at the same time. Like typically I would see nodes which are at the same time participating in some Python environment, for example. Yeah, thank you for that question, because yeah, that's true, for sure, we had that also in, as you've seen, uh, some of the notes from Berlin are in somewhere else, that's true. Um, thinking that they're in two different communities is very interesting, never seen that, but yeah, why not? Yeah, 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 really, okay. Um, but yeah, maybe, and yeah, that's 
a good input for the discussion. I think maybe we don't need to attach that to, to countries or um, even geo data, but then we need to find another way to just like display it or I don't know, do you need to fill in the field like country? It's not nothing is a must, but then the question is how can we like visualize it? Not on the map, maybe on the list or however, it doesn't matter. It's more about like where can I get the hell all the information, where are the community networks, who are active, how big are they, where can I, how can I contact them, you know, things like that. If I want to travel the world and want to meet all of you, how can I get this information? <laughs> would be a hard thing if I don't know the, no, the name at last, at least of the community, then it would be hard to find all of you. Oh, cool. On the moon. To deploy this for um, uh, our community uh, is sufficient to host the JSON file with described uh, all the, the network, or uh, is some uh, do we need to install any software uh, server to um, you can use the API generator uh, you've seen and of course you need uh, something to host uh, this file uh, like a web server or something but but you don't need uh, to install any software um, maybe you want to to update this file on a regular base uh, so you will write a script uh, to update uh, some information but uh, that's really simple because it's it's, it's just uh, JSON and uh, um, for example, there are s some really small scripts to update our node numbers in, in our files and uh, that aren't that much lines of code. Um. Okay, so when, when you access the API, you just download the, the whole JSON file. You, don't, uh, uh, you can't access, uh, for example, only the, the country or the, uh, from uh, from the community, we just take uh, we just download uh, the JSON file, and then you can do uh, some other things with with the tools we we use. Uh, there there's a collector we call it collector that uh, collects all the community's T files uh, it finds uh, in the directory. And um, of course, you can have uh, some um, cache mode uh, if uh, sometimes there are some files aren't available all the time, and so you have to cache uh, information uh, else uh, the community, for example, would disappear from the map. And um, these are some tools that are more complicated, but um, it's uh, all open source and it's on GitHub, so everyone can use it and uh, find it. I think one starting point could be that we open a new like directory for for the for the communities as you, if you're interested. Then we need to find another name because I think Freifunk API is not the right name for an international thing. Um, we can have a course about that, like, or we just call it like Libre Networks uh, API or whatever. And um, yeah, and then we can uh, use the generator. Um, I don't know if we want to use it on the, on the, what's your opinion? Do you want to use it on our website or do we should also like, we can also like set up a small website for the, inter uh, for the international like generator and make it a bit more neutral that it's not like too much Freifunk. And another question that you thought about uh, integrating uh, NetJSON uh, is the specification. Yes, um, I think uh, NetJSON can be a um, for example, a field in, in the in the community API, and uh, you add uh, the link to your NetJSON file, and uh, there can be another tool that collects all the NetJSON links and uh, builds any other views or data with it, like we do it with the with the Freifunk map, uh, where all the nodes of Germany are in. So. This uh, API is meant to be uh, a thing to uh, to hold meta information and not node information or something like this. Uh, 
Yeah, so I think we can see that this, this redundant to the like, giant list of community virus networks on Wikipedia. The single Wikipedia entry got like, a list of hundreds and hundreds of actually planned, existing, fantastic, something and practical networks. So um, it would be really nice to see that information being synchronized in some way, like semantic wiki uh, could, could offer to do that. Um, are you planning to export it to, to semantic wiki? Uh, not right now. Maybe you can do. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Maybe I I don't know if you can get the data from the Freifunk m uh, node map. Uh, we should ask uh, the developers of this map um, if they provide a pure JSON file of uh, all the collected data. Um, there is um, another thing. We have a summarized uh, directory, we call it, and there are all the community files in one file. In Maybe we should publish uh, that link, uh, but it's uh, it's downloadable, and all the tools use uh, this uh, this uh, summarized file um, to access or to display uh, data or use some data. Um, let me show it. Um, uh, here you can see the directory of. Um, ah, okay. Um, it's it's just another JSON file. Our directory. Um, um, and it's a, it's a simple list of uh, links uh, to community files and our, our collector tool uh, just um, iterates uh, through this list and uh, takes all the links to the communities and for example we have some tests um, where we can it's uh, it's failing every time because uh, there are some communities uh, having invalid um, API files, and uh, we also have some uh, tests uh, to validate uh, the JSON files based on the uh, JSON schema we have there, and. Um, so you can have a really uh, good uh, summarized file at the end. Maybe I find the summarized file too. It's not published right now. Ah, um, we have uh, some different um, views on the file. This is a GeoJSON um, view on, on the summarized directory. Um, it's for our map uh, where we use it and there we have uh, the typical GeoJSON uh, things like coordinates and what kind of uh, type is it and in the property files uh, we have uh, all the things we need to display on the on the map. and. Our summarized directory uh, is just uh, all f as, uh, community files are copied uh, to it. So I have one more question. Hmm? Uh, it seems that like in JSON is the thing about the JSON file. And it seems to me that what more problem here is uh, the internet value in the way, this one, and perhaps we'll get some more um, semantic uh, information from JSON. Are you going to do JSON and D in the data? 
sorry, I didn't get it. Was it was for Sean? Sorry, do you have an Italian profile? Yep. So Jason dash LD. Jason dash LD. LD? Yeah, the word. Hmm? Those words. Ah, work, okay. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I've, I've read about it, uh, yes. Maybe uh, you can link uh, different files together, yes. Yeah, but to me, the basic question is like, do we want to build uh, like a um, repository in, in that sense or in another way, like, my my main goal. I'm not I'm not caring so much about the the yeah for sure semantics is a good thing and and not so much if, if it's in JSON or whatever. My point is more like I want to uh, have a chance to catch up with everybody uh, in a in a simple way, like to have a um, repository where I can find the an accessible for non technicians to accessible uh, repository where I can find all the community networks with some informations and. Yeah, how to catch up with them. So, so I don't know if that is the best way to do it, or there are others. But it would be a thing where we should commu um, like collaborate on just what we can offer. How so? That's how far we came. So, <laughs> yeah. Is there already a way to prevent uh, redundant information by means to uh, communities to declare that they, for example, inherited their firmware from another community? Like uh, having a way for objects to inherit properties of already existing other objects and database would be a way to do that, for example. Um, at the moment, um, this work is done by the tools. Um, for example, there are RSS feeds. Uh, some communities uh, share the same websites, and uh, of course, you don't want to have the, the news uh, several times in, in your feed. And uh, there, the tools will uh, avoid duplicates in there. Yeah, because it would be nice to like see all the communities which like basically base their firmware on the original of their new project uh, firmware. And there are a lot of them. That would like immediately give you an overview like how was the information and the knowledge passed on. Um, it's like it would be interesting social graphs, I believe. We kind of see like what knowledge was inherited and where it was to be used. Cool. Obviously we would have to take yeah. multiple inheritance into account. But uh, last last year we we already had uh, these ideas uh, to do something like uh, like this uh, to um, it's called Deepa Meta it's a project uh, based in Berlin and um, yeah uh, but uh, we didn't have the time to do it. <laughs> Okay. No more questions? Then um, thank you. Ah. <laughs> yep, I know. Mm -hmm. But um, we have. Um, we have a GitHub repository where our uh, schema is uh, located. So, so for me, the left question is: How can we go on from that? If you're interested to um, um, to yeah join this to make it international, maybe we can have a little chat outside where we um, define how we could start this, like like doing a different GitHub repository where people start contributing or whatsoever. I would, I hope you're interested in and you join us for this chat then outside. So thank you. <laughs>